Hi, how are you? My name is Michael and I'm an automation genius at Informatis. In these videos I'm going to show you what's behind the Tosca obstacles. You'll see how I tackle each challenge and I'll show you my step-by-step -step approach. Interested? Let's go! The following video is about a bubble sort algorithm executed by Tosca. We'll take a closer look at while loops, if statements, index identification of controls, T-box evaluation module, max repetitions, and steering parameters. And this is how I go about it. Let's look at the obstacle bubble sort. The challenge is to sort a random order of the numbers 1 to 9. We already know this approach in programming as bubble sort. We compare the two numbers within the blue bubble and swap them if descending. If the numbers are in ascending order, we simply choose next. This is done till keep sorting isn't shown anymore. Fairly obviously, this requires an indeterminate number of repetitions comparing two numbers. Let's have a closer look at the algorithm. Repeat the following test steps as long as keep sorting is shown. If the left number is bigger than the right number, swap them. Shift the blue bubble to the right. But let's begin by scanning the required controls. The obstacle is based on an HTML screen. Personally, I often use the option Select on screen to choose the controls. We'll scan the blue bubble, the two numbers beneath it, the two buttons and the keep sorting control. The orange color indicates standard properties are not sufficient for a precise identification of a control, so we have to choose additional properties. On the blue bubble control, a diff container, we additionally choose the class name for unique identification. We rename the control accordingly. The number controls are not that easy to identify. They differ only in the content and that is not sufficient. So we use another method to identify the controls identification via index. Beneath the parent control, which is the blue bubble, the two number controls can be identified via index. I personally avoid the use of indexing the controls as the index could change, for example on a screen refresh or after a deployment of the software. In this case, the index refers only to the child elements and this is sufficient even when the blue bubble moves from left to right. The last in controls have ambiguous properties, so we use them. We save the module and now let's take a closer look at it. The attribute bubble has the property class name. The attributes left number and right number have the property constraint index. The buttons swap and next and the link keep sorting have an ID property. I call the module bubble sort. Let's move on to the test steps. To model loops and comparisons within a Tosca test case, we can use while and do statements for loops and if statements for comparisons. When generating a while statement, two objects are created. Firstly, a condition object and secondly, a loop object. In a do statement, it's the other way around. First a loop and then a condition. In an if statement, a condition object is created and added by a then clause and an optional else clause. So if every test step in condition part passes, this leads to an ender of the loop or the then clause, whereas when the condition test step fails, the condition is not met. This leads to an end of the loop or an ender of an optional existing else path. The failure of a condition won't have an impact on the whole test case itself, but only on the condition part. Let's create a while statement and drop the latest scanned module into the condition object. I'll rename it accordingly. I'll now do a verification on the test step value keep sorting and we are done with the condition for entering the loop. Within the loop we first create an if statement to verify if a left number is greater than the right number. So we drop our scanned module onto the if condition and now we use it to buffer the left number as a numeric. 
Then we verify based on the value of the right number. If it is smaller as a numeric, then the buffered left number. To get the values of these numbers, we have to use the property inner text as the number controls are div containers. On an if statement, depending on a condition, either a then group of test steps or an else group of test steps will be executed. Let's drag and drop the created module in the then path and click on the button swap to switch the numbers if the condition is met. We'll proceed without an else path. For the last time, we use the module to shift the bubble to the right by pressing the next button. As experience shows, we have to wait for the swap animation to be finished. For this, we use the standard module tbox wait with a value of 500 milliseconds. Now let's execute the test case. The number of repetitions is not determined beforehand and differs on each use of the obstacle website. Tosca has a backup feature, a parameter called max repetition. The test case fails when reached in a loop. So if a number of repetitions exceeds this max repetition, we get a failure of the test case. When I executed the test case several times, I found that the default 30 repetitions are reached very quickly. So I decided to set the value max repetition to 200. If we take a closer look at the automated screen, we notice a bouncing effect during control steering. Although this has no functional impact, it disturbs the visual effect of automation. And that brings me to another steering parameter, scrolling behavior. A scrolling behavior is an additional property of a module attribute. When the control is steered, Tosca positions that control within the screen either to the top, to the bottom or to the center accordingly. The default setting is center oriented and that's what we see in our case. This can be deactivated by setting the value to none. We can copy and paste the whole steering parameter from one attribute to the other two attributes affected. Now we have a very smooth automation as you can see. In this third supplement I want to show you an alternative solution for comparing two values. Firstly, we store the two numbers of a blue bubble and then we use the T-Box evaluation module to compare them. I think it's quite obvious that this has an improved readability. In principle, I recommend avoiding the use of loops and ifs as these contradict deterministic test case flow. If at all, I use this option for a very specific purpose. The present case is a prime example for such use. I also highly recommend checking out the Tosca automation tools in the standard workspace template, which can also be downloaded from the Tarsenti support site. This will show you a lot of best practice examples. In this example, I was able to cover the implementation details for steering the controls within the module. So the test case shows only the business solution. The test case doesn't need to know any details of how to identify a control or which properties I have to use for steering. The link to the obstacle and further links are available in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video about Tosca. Feel free to comment on what you like most or what you like to see next. This is Michael, your automation genius from Informatis. Wishing you happy automated testing. Thank you.